54 when I had my stroke. Um, it was Christmas Day 2011. The stroke um, affects um, only the right side of my body and I had um, lost lost is um, lost my vision from the left eye but the speech and the um, leg and arm is useless. When John was discharged from speech therapy the thought that that was the only communication John was ever going to have was really scary. It wasn't enough for me. My, my husband was so wise. He has so many valuable things to say that just being able to name everyday objects wasn't enough. And I went on to Talkstroke and on Talkstroke that very day had been a post from a university, City University in London, and they were looking for participants to take part in an aphasia project. I um, have taken part in research projects at City University of London and UCL and Oxford University currently um, participating in my ninth research project. Um, I, um, they have all been about aphasia. Um, sometimes while um, the first day asked for my um, opinion when my um, they playing the research projects. Research has research has changed things for the whole family, not just for John. Personally, I see changes in John's communication every time he does a research project. But more than that, it's engaged the whole family. It's it's lovely for John to have something to tell people when he's asked, "What have you been up to?" But the kids are all really involved because lots of the therapy involves technology. The kids are interested. Research um, makes me feel um, like I'm worth it. Uh, um, after all, I don't go to work anymore. <laughs> um, research it, um, gives the the chance to meet new people. They need to accept that the researchers might ask them to do something which seems unusual, but all these tasks have a purpose. Research m makes me feel like I'm worthwhile. I am, um, after all, I don't go to work anymore. I would encourage other people to get involved in research projects because it's good use of my time and hopefully I'm learning something and it is fun. My name's Harry and um, I've had two strokes 
It was almost a year ago today. It was last June. But anyway, Ambulance men, they arrived and they said, we're taking you to hospital. And I said, well, why? And they said, because we think you've had a stroke. And I said, well, yeah, 25 years ago. They said, no, we think you just had one now. I remember thinking, what? Wow. And it, it affected my speech, my reading, my writing, and my walking. Uh, I couldn't talk at all. Um, it took me three, well, three months in hospital, three more months of rehabilitation. Because so I was in denial for quite a while in hospital. I just couldn't believe that it happened to me. I thought they've got it wrong. But when I moved from denial into a sort of full, full acceptance of having had a stroke, I began to get very fearful for the future. I want to know why, but what on its own concerns for me. Um, I wondered what sort of work I could do when I've only really got one good hand. But one physiotherapist said to me, okay, Harry, I think you're right. You should have been at least offered counseling, but instead of moaning about it, why don't you do something about it? I remember saying, like, yeah, but what can I do? And she said, why don't you do a counselling course? And it completely surprised me. It's a bit of a long story, but I eventually um, found my direction, which was counselling. Um, I just felt that it was something I could do. I went on a, an introductory course at the City Literary Institute. Um, off of Drury Lane, um, and there was a, a one-year course, and I knew quite early, I thought, this is for me, I can do this. And I was um, told that the Institute of Education, London University, were running a two-year advanced diploma course. Cut long story short, I did that. But I, I will see anybody who's been affected by a stroke and aphasia. I will use um, all, uh, everything really to, to help with communication. So sometimes clients might have some, some writing. Um, I've even used stones um, to symbolize people, places, things. One thing that people with uh, who've had strokes, and you may hear it from other from people, and they'll say, "Yes, but you don't know what it's like." I do. I know what it's like. I know it can be very, very upsetting. I'm not saying everyone should have counselling, but what I'm saying is, that I think everyone should be offered counselling because timing, I think, is quite important. Um, some people feel quite early on they'd like to see somebody somebody who's been on a similar journey. Um, it doesn't even need to be the person who's had the stroke. It could be a, a spouse or even a friend. Anyone who's been affected by a stroke. It's very um, rewarding work to, um, to work with people trying to come back after having had you know, such a significant event in their lives. Fifty-three. I'll never forget this date. It was the 11th of June, 2005. I couldn't do a thing. Uh, it was some week, well, long for every walk um, to physiotherapy. Um, I couldn't talk. 
Um, my 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 sight was slightly damaged and still is. Um, my balance was a band very affected. So I bought a newspaper. I bought the, uh, the camera, camera. I bought away. Bought the paper. In it. I tried to read it because I couldn't. I was so um, horrified. Yeah, I, that's one of the first times I realised how bad it was. Um, it was around that time where I got very, very, very suicidal, but um, yeah, so thank, thank goodness it passed. I was referred to Hedway in Bury, Bury St. Bray St. Edmund by um, the, the occupation therapist from the, the hospital. Um, they, take, they took me there to a sort of a, a visit. Hedway is a charity for people with acquired brain injury. Um, not just stroke, but um, uh, say a uh, tumour, uh, tumor, um, um, Road, road accident, road, tank, road accident, um, or violence, that sort of thing. So um, it's more, it's slightly different from association, but um, a long overlap. Yeah. Headway runs uh, day, 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 daycare centres, and um, so I went to Headway in Bury twice a day, twice a month, twice a week, um, by taxi from home uh, to receive this um, basically the low key re rehab re rehabilitation. So um, it's a good place to go go to because. Um, if you want to get away from home, uh, get some therapy, and uh, meet other people with um, the same or different problems, and have a, you know, learn from them, and vice versa, it's a good place to go. In summer last year, I had a little letter saying, um, "Alan, would you like to be the chairman?" So, okay, I'll do that. So um, I became the chairman. Um, I think basically people knew my background in sort of the policy and the sort of administrator, and they thought they'd be a good chairman. My attempt to get back to my way of life as it was before. Um, Organising things, doing things, helping other people, um, being involved in things, being involved in the community. Um, I've always been that sort of person. I always liked being involved in community, whether it be you know, my local village, my local village hall, my local school, um, the, the governments. You know, it's, that's my way of doing things. So I, I gain a great deal from that. The the actives at the show group, support group um, are very varied. We had, we had, tomorrow we're having um, a seated keep, keep, keep fit. A local therapist comes in to uh, guide us in how to um, do, exercise, do exercises sitting, and um, for those who can't maybe walk or aren't very stable, uh, we have um, quizzes, uh, which might be anything, pitch games or uh, word games, or just um, uh, round, the round table discussions. Uh, various, also various games to help us get our hands going, or get our thinking sorted out. Uh, and of course we have um, outings to say, um, Say at homes or the CCC side, but um, it means I, now I'm both a member and a volunteer, helping run the group. Um, so instead of taking part in those games, and now organising them uh, and trying to get the ideas, um, I think it's happening here. Doing um, public awareness days, um, we're very lucky to be supported by a local supermarket. Some people don't need much support. Um, for example, I don't need too much resort, support um, physically. Um, I need, when I first joined, I needed the confidence and um, the encouragement to um, do the games and uh, yeah, get to know people. Um, but some people, of course, arrive with no end, they can't speak. So there has to be, someone has to work with them one to one all the time to help them do, say, a game or uh, giving answers. The support group is done by volunteers. So we're not qualified people, we're just um, willing volunteers who are trying to help people. Um, so um, just, knowing, just knowing you're not, you're not alone. And of course, I would say, so, so, um, I said to people, um, when we just stroke, it might be saying, yeah, four months ago, six months ago, it might be two years ago. So, you know, come on to the group, we'll have a help group. My life changed completely as a result of John's stroke. We weren't married. When he had his stroke, we didn't live together. We'd been engaged less than three months. I had a full-time job and I got to the pool every day, either in my lunch break or after work. And I had a bit of a social life. And I had a fiance that treated me like a princess. 
when John came home from hospital, seven weeks after his stroke, I'd moved my son and myself into John's home and I'd given up my work. It became clear to me that I wanted to help the future of stroke. I didn't know how I could help, but I wanted to try. My first stroke association volunteering was something I could do from home when John was asleep or watching the football and it was reviewing stroke related training courses. Because I could do it online in my own time, it didn't affect my supporting John, but it was making a real difference to the people who were planning those courses to have some lay involvement. We signed up to be volunteers at the beginning of 2014. So it was about two years after John's stroke. And at that point, we had built something of a life for ourselves and we were ready to help other people and inspire and just try and make things better in the world of stroke. Over dinner at last year's UK Stroke Assembly, I was chatting to a Stroke Association member of staff called Lisa and she really sparked my passion for um, awareness raising. She introduced me to her local equivalent in the area and that, that spark has grown into a, a full-on passion. And luckily, there was just starting in our area a child education project and as a result of that, I've delivered an interactive presentation to eight scout troops educating over 100 children about the brain, about living with a disability and of course the FAST message. And I think it's really valuable for the children to meet somebody with a disability and see in the flesh that when they're trying to take off and on their shoes and socks with one hand, that actually some people, some stroke survivors are trying to do it every day with one hand and without any control in the leg either. I think it's really useful for them to meet a real life stroke survivor. It makes me feel hopeful that if stroke affects the families of these children that we're educating, they'll be more prepared than we were. And I hope that they'll learn the FAST message, they'll take it with them their whole lives from learning it in childhood. John and I volunteer at the stroke unit at our local hospital. We offer support to stroke survivors and their families. And hopefully we can give them a bit of optimism on their life after stroke and show them that it is possible and you can have a fulfilling life after your stroke. You just have to find it. Together with Karen, John and I are part of a team trying to set up a singing and sound group in Lincolnshire. John and I tried singing very early on. He could sing familiar songs when he couldn't speak a word. I'm working with a local charity, Soundlinks, who have some amazing accessible instruments we're hoping to run a group for stroke survivors who can be uplifted by making music and after 12 sessions they should have a piece of music to take home with them as proof that they've made something. I want the world to understand stroke for so many reasons. That's why I'm educating children across Lincolnshire. That's why I'm wearing purple every day in May. And that's why we're trying to make the whole village purple.